Picture this. You walk into an elevator to visit your friend's office. You head over to the console to punch in the floor you're trying to get to. Your friend says she works on floor M, a rather unusual choice for a floor, given the rest are listed numerically. In some elevators, M could mean mezzanine, but no, that's not the case here. You search for a moment until you finally find it, positioned on the console between the floors 12 and 14, M. M is the 13th letter of the English alphabet. In actuality, you are trying to get to the 13th floor of this building, a floor which exists but has been labeled M to conceal its true identity. Labeling floors as M, 12B, or even skipping 13 altogether is common practice. In fact, a whopping 85% of the elevator panels made by the Otis Elevator Company, one of the leading elevator manufacturers in the world, do not list the number 13. This single change causes confusion every year. From the innocent flummoxing of a passenger in an elevator to life or death situations where firefighters are trying to get to the right floor. It's even permeated airplanes where many don't have a 13th row. These situations are the result of Triskaidekaphobia. Good morning, Magic. I'm Gavin Verhey from Wizards of the Coast, and today I want to tell you about something you absolutely know, how it impacts the world, and of course, Magic the Gathering. Go find your luckiest object, because today is September 13th, and we are about to dig into the number 13. If you aren't familiar with this mouthful of a word, Triskaidekaphobia is the fear of the number 13. It stems from ancient Greek, where Triskaideka meant 13 and Phobos meant fear, and it's something most of us are probably familiar with. Now if you're watching this, there's a good chance you think any fear of 13 is nonsense. But be honest, have you ever had a choice of numbers and deliberately avoided 13? Or on the other side, have you ever noticed how hard companies try to avoid using it? How very few train and flight times leave at a time that ends in 13? I think most of us can find at least one instance of this in our lives. One place where our minds went, I mean, 13 doesn't mean anything, but just in case, maybe I'll pick 12 instead. One instance of Triskaidekaphobia. Perhaps making it even spookier is that nobody is quite sure where this fear of the number 13 came from, but it's clear that it has been here in the real world for a long time. Some have theorized it comes all the way from ancient Babylon in 1700 BCE, where the Code of Hammurabi omitted the number 13 in its list of laws. Others have suggested it started with the fact that 13 people attended the Last Supper in the Christian Bible, the event where Judas showcased his betrayal. Another explanation is that in Norse mythology, Loki showed up as the 13th guest to a dinner party where he wasn't invited, and then killed Baldr, a son of Odin. Or maybe it's even as simple as math. The world runs on so many 12s, 12 months in a year, 12 hours in each half of a day, that some have theorized 13 just feels unnatural. Similarly, on the world of Innistrad, it's not clear where the fear of 13 stems from, at least creatively, given that Triskaidekaphobia canonically exists on the plane. But mechanically, I can tell you exactly where it began. Innistrad kicked off an entire new era of magic design. With the exception of a couple early sets like Arabian Nights and Ice Age, in the first 18 years of magic, the planes and sets we visited were more about mechanical ideas than anything else. Where design came up with the mechanical concept, which then the set's creative would be based around. The majority of sets were things like Onslaught or Shards of Alara, places created around something like tribal or three color shards, a mechanical expression. 
And even the worlds which were more of an exception here, such as Mirrodin, a world of metal and slightly more science fiction themes, or Zendikar, a world of adventure, weren't really explorations of their genres. That's not how the set started. Zendikar literally began life, as the Mark Rosewater patented term, Lanzapalooza. The closest thing in then modern magic was probably Kamigawa, with its many nods to Japanese lore and culture, but that set also wasn't exactly a shining paragon, given it had been received so poorly. Innistrad was the first to really ask the question, what if we started with a genre people knew and then made the best design we could out of that? We in game design call this top-down design, starting with a flavorful concept and then building from it, as opposed to bottom-up design, where you start with a mechanical idea and then let that inform the world, which is what most other sets had been. It would be a magic world built on horror tropes. Not a graveyard set where we conveniently made it a horror set. It was a horror world, and as a result, dealing with the graveyard is what naturally made the most sense. It was truly going to be a flavor first expansion. To quote Mark Rosewater in one of his first articles about Innistrad back in 2011, the components of the set were completely derived from what the horror genre needed, and it would go on to be a successful direction for Magic, as the smash hit of Innistrad would later cause many more sets to be designed in this way, such as Theros, Amonkhet, and Kaldheim. But to bring it back to that very first Innistrad set, right away, Mark asked the team to brainstorm all the different things people saw in horror. And specifically, he asked the team to focus on things more like classic horror movies, he wanted that gothic horror vibe. And that's how we got the mini creatures we did. For example, zombies picked up cues from Dawn of the Dead, bringing in the iconic shambling flesh-hungry zombies in black, while the blue zombies ended up more like Frankenstein's monster, creations born out of a lab from stitched together pieces. Vampires picked up their core essence from Dracula, a charming character who beguiles you into becoming one of their own, and very much feels like the more regal vampires you'll find on Innistrad. But there was one particular element that made a through line across stories and cinema, from very tiny to gigantic. And that's the number 13. On a large level, I'm sure you all recognize all kinds of movies where 13 plays a crucial role in the name or plot. From 13 Ghosts, which has, well, 13 ghosts, to Stephen King's 1408, where we learn that the one and the four and the eight in the title equal 13. And of course, any one of the 12 entries in the Friday the 13th franchise, 13 is everywhere. Friday the 13th, of course, being the unluckiest of unlucky days. It even has its own variant, Frigga Triskaidekaphobia. This fear around Friday the 13th is estimated to impact 17 to 21 million people in the United States, according to the Stress Management Center and Phobia Institute, causing them to stay indoors and play it safe. The movie Friday the 13th certainly does nothing to assuage those fears, as Jason Voorhees slices and dices through all manner of people. But in any case, it's not just the obvious places like movie titles or major parts of plots where 13 appears. It's also a way just used to strike a sense of eerie unease. For example, in Stanley Kubrick's masterpiece, The Shining, early in the movie, Stuart Ullman, the hotel manager, says of the hotel's hedge maze, This is our famous hedge maze. It's quite an attraction around here. The walls are 13 feet high, and the hedge is about as old as the hotel itself. It's a seemingly throwaway detail, but Kubrick just makes you feel a small clench in your chest when you hear the number 13, setting up for what's to come. This technique is all over horror films. And if it worked for Kubrick, well, it's certainly good enough for us. And that's where the 13s in Innistrad come from. Not only do you find 13 in major plots across the entire horror genre? But even just seeing the number 13 on a card like Tragic Slip or Tree of Redemption makes you feel the slightest hint of horror. And that is the essence of bringing a horror set to life. 
It captivated my imagination from the first time I ever saw Innistrad, back before I came to Wizards. So much so that I began designing some of my own cards for fun, which used the number 13. Some were better than others, but there was one I was sure was going to be somewhere in the block. It seemed so obvious and like such a perfect hit. A card that made a player with 13 life lose the game. I was always a fan of Hidetsugu's second right, and doing that before the number 13 seemed like a slam dunk. So shortly after Innistrad's release, almost exactly 10 years ago, I was hired by Wizards. On my very first day, I was sat down at my desk and given the next year of magic stats to look at. I poured through the cards of Dark Ascension and Avacyn Restored and discovered there was no 13 Life Matters design. I immediately asked Ken Nagel if they ever tried it, and he told me, huh, no, we didn't. Sounds interesting. Keep it in mind if we ever do Innistrad again. Flash forward about five years. It turns out we are going to Innistrad again, and I'm on the design team. One of the first designs I submitted for Shadows Over Innistrad was a design I called Unlucky Day. It was three and a black, so four mana total, for a sorcery which said target opponent at exactly 13 life loses the game. Lead designer Mark Gottlieb liked it, and in a brilliant move, turned it into the enchantment Triskaidekaphobia you see today. I love that it slowly creates this mounting sense of terror, usually not an immediate threat, but always rustling in the back of your mind that you have to be careful or Triskaidekaphobia might get you. And check out that art. I always love it when a piece comes together on all axes, and William Murray absolutely crushed this one. See those blood splatters in the art? How many are there? Well, I'll give you one guess. That's right, it's 13. How about the number of logs in the fireplace? 13. The number of stones in both the inner arch and the outer framework of that fireplace? 13 apiece. Wooden panels on the wall? 13. Rivets in the barrel? 13. Number of pieces the plate shattered into on the ground? 12. No, <laughs> just kidding, it's 13. I'll let you look closely at those trees in the back on your own time but it's absolutely a masterful implementation of the flavor. I have a number of things I'm happy to have been a part of designing with Shadows over Innistrad. Designing a mechanic that would eventually turn into clues being a big one, but bringing this card to life from an idea I had predating wizards, that is my favorite. And even more cool to me is that it has gone on to inspire other cards, such as Triskaidekaphile, File, appearing in Innistrad Midnight Hunt, and along with it, of course, a slew of other new cards referencing the number 13. The newest entry not just into magic, but a part of human culture which has existed for thousands of years. Or at least, it's worth saying that this is the case in the Western world. In China, for example, four is actually the number you don't want to hear, because it sounds similar to the word for death. Fear of it is called tetraphobia, by the way, but I don't think I need to make a card for that phobia. We already have one. It's called Fire Blast. Given how global the world is today, anywhere that may have been free of Triskaidekaphobia has surely been immersed in it. The funny thing about phobias is that they're not necessarily either on or off. They're a sliding scale. Whether spiders, heights, or indeed a number, they're all things we can be a little frightened of, too. I'm not afraid of spiders, and I wouldn't call myself an arachnophobe, but that doesn't mean I'm thrilled to see one crawling up my leg, either. And similarly, I wouldn't say I'm scared of the number 13. I'm a perfectly logical person. But by the same token, I can't say that I've never consciously avoided the number. You cannot escape it. Whether an elevator with a conspicuously absent number, a movie where 13 is mentioned offhand to unnerve you, or a magic game with a card that simply uses the number 13, the impact on our world is everywhere. Is there a particularly interesting instance of a 13 or a missing 13 that you've seen out there somewhere? Let me know in the comments down below. As for Triskaidekaphobia, it's everywhere. So what more do I have to say about it then? Well, 
quite literally. You got this. Anyway, Dark Ascension then followed up with five more curses, including two more Curses Matters cards in Curse of Misfortunes and Curse of Thirst. And so the sets came out and curses were received all right. They were flavor wins and definitely felt right, but understandably being enchanted